Okay, hello everybody. Welcome to a Viva Mondo webinar. Today we are joined by Valencia College in beautiful Orlando, Florida. Um, and they will be here to discuss reasons of why we should go to Valencia College and the benefits of studying at the college. Um, today we've got the wonderful Jason Davis with us and Alba, who is a student who will be able to give you her uh, view of studying in Valencia. Um, and if you do have any questions, please, by all means, do ask them in the Q&A at the bottom of our screen, as you can see. And we are ready to go. So I'm going to hand you back over to Jason. All right. Thank you very much. Um, thank you for the lovely introduction. My name is Jason. I work for uh, Valencia College, obviously. Um, I have been with our school for uh, about two years. And before I worked for Valencia, uh, I actually was a Valencia student. Uh, this has been some years ago, um, but I can try to share a little bit about that. But I really brought Alba along here with me to share that student experience because it's been quite some time that I was a student at Valencia. Um, I, you may see behind me, um, I've got some pictures and the flag of Hungary. Uh, I have been an international educator for most of my adult life. As soon as I got my master's degree, I went overseas and became a teacher. Um, I worked in China for five years at universities. I've been, in, I've been employed in Korea, also Hungary, Spain, and Canada. But right here at Valencia College, this is where I really want to be. This is my hometown, and I'm extremely proud to represent our institution today. Um, how about you, Alba? Can you introduce yourself? Yes, so my name is Alba Izquierdo. I am an international student ambassador um, for HIIT in Valencia. I am from Spain and I have been a Valencia student for slightly over three years now. And I love it. <laughs> what do you love about it? Oh my God, at the beginning it's a little bit hard, but once you get to know Valencia and you get like, in, like engaged with it, you engage yeah. with Valencia, you, you really end up loving the place like the people once you like meet your like your group of friends you really like it because like the diversity of people here is huge so you're gonna find someone that you like for sure there's so so many people <laughs> and so many campuses here like whatever you live like if you live in the north west east south whatever you have a valencia campus next to you so like it's so convenient this place Yes, indeed. In fact, I often will work at two different campuses and it's every campus has its own personality and uh, different people and everybody here is usually just so helpful and happy um, to be here. It's a great place and it's a, it's a great place to work and I know it's a great place to study, but overall it's just a great environment for education and I'm extremely proud to be part of this. Um, if there's no reason to delay. We can go ahead and start our presentation so that we don't run into too much time. Uh, I'll keep an eye on the time the best I can, but if I start to take too long, just let me know. Um, so the first thing that I wanna talk about is actually where are we? Um, we are located in Orlando in Florida, and you can see on the PPT here, this is my home. This is where we live. Um, this is our beautiful downtown. Orlando is an interesting city because it feels, at times, it feels like it's very big. Um, we have a lot of traffic, but we also have a lot of visitors that come here. Um, and that gives the city a lot of energy and life. See, Disney World and Universal Studios are right here in Orlando. And so what that means for us is that we have people, millions of people who come and visit us from all over the world every year. And with that tourism comes a lot of new culture, a lot of new restaurants, a lot of new places and um, places to go shopping, and a lot of different languages spoken, but most importantly, a lot of diversity. And there's a lot of electricity and energy in our city in part because there's so much to do. And, um, but at the same time, we're actually not that big of a city. The city of Orlando only has around 2 million people. I say only because that's a big number, but it's certainly not the same as any uh, major, other major cities like uh, Houston, Philadelphia, New York, Chicago. We're nowhere near that size. Um, so it's really just a nice blend of size and plenty to do 
but not feeling too overwhelming. And most importantly, perhaps, it's not that expensive. The cost of living here is pretty, pretty reasonable. Um, we're also famous for having year round warm weather. So if that's something that would interest you and you want to get out of a place that has winters, we don't really have winters here. Um, Alba, how does the weather in Orlando compare to where you grew up in Spain? What do you, what's the difference? Oh, in Spain, like in December, January, February, it will be snowing. Here, it doesn't snow at all. Like, I don't know if it ever snowed here, but it's, it's I mean, it's winter, so it's a little bit cold, but nothing at all like New York, Spain, or those countries, like there. Yeah, yes, definitely Like maybe not. a coat and that's it, like a fat jacket and you should be good. Yeah, we don't really have to worry about cold weather too much. Um, if anything, just protect yourself from the sun is our big thing. We've got beaches to each side about an hour to the east, an hour to the west. Uh, we've got some of the best beaches in the world. I personally, that's my favorite place to go in Orlando is actually to get out of Orlando and go into nature. Um, but those are both very close drives to us or even take a bus. It's really pretty convenient to do. Um, and so that's a little bit about Orlando. And because every college, I think the location is very important. Um, if you guys have more questions about Orlando, Alba and I are at this point are both locals. Like I said, I live my whole life here, uh, mostly grew up here and Alba has been here for several years. So if you'd like to know more about our city, then definitely feel free to ask some questions because we'd be happy to tell you more. This is a place that we love very much. Uh, we're very excited about being in Orlando. Um, but next, we're actually going to talk a little bit about the college ourselves. Okay, um, so we're just going to do a quick overview of Valencia College. Uh, I want to. I, I need to mention first of all that we are a community college. For those of you who are not familiar with the uh, education system in the United States. We've got different colleges and different universities. And I know it can be a little confusing at times. Um, what, what makes us different from most universities is that as a community college, most of our degrees are two-year programs, two years. And we've got two types of those, which is the Associate in Arts and the Associate in Science. And I'm going to explain a little bit about how those work a little bit later on. But the majority of our students do not finish their bachelor's degree with us. For many students, this is a starting point, and there's reasons for that. Um, for one thing, uh, this is a big factor right here. Valencia College, as opposed to our state college at state universities in the state of Florida, um, we are quite small. We have a lot of students, but because our, we have multiple campuses and we have a huge faculty of professors and teachers, we keep our classes small. So for those of you who are interested in a little bit more one-on-one -on -one or hands-on learning and get to know your classmates and your professors better, keep in mind that our average class size is 24. As a point of comparison, um, I myself, after I left Valencia, I went to the University of South Florida in Tampa. We just say USF, it's easier to say. So I went to USF and my freshman and sophomore years, I had classes with about 400 students, um, which was, for me, not the ideal learning scenario. I was 23, a non-traditional student, and I really needed some extra attention and care, um, which I didn't always get. Do you get a little bit more? How? What's your experience with the classes here at Valencia, Alba? So it's the same as you said. It's very, since there's like a, not a lot of students, like it says they're 24, normally it's like on the 20s. Uh, it's way better if you want to learn more and be closer to the professor or even to form study groups. That's Good so point. much better. Yeah, because you like, yeah, it's 24 people, maybe in the science classes, like the tables are four by four. So it's very easy to like make friends in the class or like meet after class to study. Like if you have questions, you can go to the office hours of the professor and he's not going to have a hundred students waiting for him. It's yeah. yes, like those 20 people. So it becomes more like easier to, to study. You are not as nervous or shy because if you have a question, you have to speak in front of 400 people. Right. Um, yeah, like in front of 20. Like it's more like family kind of thing. Like you get to know people. Yeah, that's a really good way to put it. It is more like a family. In fact, often when we speak of Valencia College, we refer to the Valencia family, not just our college, because we are like a family here. 
Um, and one of one of another benefits, of course, we got this. We mentioned the small sizes, um, but the the advantage to you getting your degree at Valencia College is also access. And now this goes into the small class size thing. We believe in open access to higher education to all students. And that's not only uh, a foot in the door, but it's a familial and rewarding experience through small class sizes. And when you have your degree from Valencia, you're guaranteed to transfer out to one of Florida's 12 public universities including UCF, which is right here in Orlando. We're gonna talk a little bit more about the transfer process and how that works and why that would be important or a benefit. Um, as, a, as a large college, which we are, so make no mistake about it, we have um, many tens of thousands of students. We are a big college, um, but we feel small due to the fact that we've got, we keep the classes small and we're spread out throughout Central Florida. Um, but as a large college, we have over 100 plus programs for you to major in. So chances are, if there's something that you're interested in, we're going to have a program for you, most likely. In fact, go ahead and ask me if there's something that we don't have, and I'll see if, you know, I'm not going to usually say no. Probably we have that program. Um, so what we're going to talk about first is the 2 plus 2 program. This is what most students at Valencia will do, although it's not the only path. Uh, as I mentioned before, we have two different types of degrees, which is the Associate in Arts and the Associate in Science. They're a little bit different, but the Associate in Arts, we usually call the two plus two plan or the transfer plan. What this allows you to do is that you can begin your higher education at Valencia College. You can start with us. Um, why start here? When you have the option potentially to go directly to one of Florida's four-year colleges. If you wanna study in Florida, then there's a lot of options for you. So why do so many students end up choosing Valencia? Um, a big reason is low cost and high quality. The low cost is built into our system as a community college. By nature, by design, community colleges are significantly less expensive than going to a four-year school. That's what we're here for. We're here to make it affordable and accessible. So it's also a little bit of easier to get in. And I'll tell you more about that in a moment. Um, in terms of high quality, this is 100% true, at least at Valencia College. I can't speak to some other community colleges, um, but Valencia has consistently, year after year after year, been considered one of the best community colleges in the United States. Uh, as recently as 2018, we were awarded a prize by the Aspen Prize as the number one community college in America. We've also been rated as number one for international student satisfaction at Valencia College. Um, these are not numbers I'm making up. I have, we have the research and data to back this up. So every year, Valencia is considered one of the best schools for, of community colleges right here in the US. Uh, and typically we're regarded as the best in the state of Florida too, which we're very proud of. Um, so that's the high quality aspect to it. Accessible admission requirements. In other words, I don't wanna necessarily use the word easy, but that's the closest comparison that comes to mind. Um, what we do is we do not require, for example, um, we do not require any SAT or ACT scores, uh, which most colleges are gonna do. Now, this is particularly problematic during a pandemic when it can be difficult for students to have access to testing centers or testing centers may not even be open um, or students may not be able to go because of you know, other pandemic related issues. So. We do not in any way require any te spe special test scores. The only one that we do require is the same as any other college, which is proof of English proficiency, which is uh, going to be IELTS, TOEFL. And even then, our standards for entry are not going to be as high as those at another college. So if I use the IELTS example, because uh, I believe IELTS is fairly popular in your neck of the woods, but if we use IELTS, uh, all that you need to be admitted to Valencia for um, Valencia College is a 5.5, whereas the typical standard for IELTS is going to be closer to 6.5. And so that's a big difference. That can save you a lot of time and money. If you're not able to get into one of the four-year colleges because your scores aren't high enough, that's where we come in. Now, that doesn't mean that all of our students come in with low scores, not at all. Um, not in any way. We have students who get amazing scores. They get eights on the IELTS. They get, you know, um, they get 90s on TOEFL and things like that. It's just that we do have that extra access for you if um, perhaps you find it challenging to get into one of the four-year schools. And at the end of the day, the process, the experience is going to be more or less the same. 
total number of years to earn a bachelor degree is still four. If you begin with us, you're with us for two years. Then you transfer out and you finish your degree somewhere else. It's still four years. Um, the diploma that you receive at the end of the day is no different. But in fact, you have the advantage of being able to get two diplomas because when you get your AA degree or associate in arts, we can just call it AA. When you get your AA degree, you get another degree from us. Um, that ends up working to your advantage when it comes to work opportunities, in fact, um, but you end up being able to display both of those, your Valencia College Associate in Arts degree, and then when you get your degree from UCF, if that's where you want to go, um, you could go to my school, USF, or you could go to Florida State. Either way, whatever school that you end up with, you're going to get that diploma too, and it's still going to take you four years to get there. But meanwhile, because you started at Valencia, you probably have saved a lot of time and were able to get a really good experience your first two years. Um, and then, this is what I mentioned before, there's more employment opportunities. Alba, do you work as an international student? Yes, so I've been working for more than two years now. So um, I think we're gonna talk about that later or do I talk about it now? Um, we're gonna get to that later, but uh, yeah. So uh, I think, let me check. Um, yeah, I think so. But we're going to come back to that. Let's let me take a quick look in the chat. And um, OK, I can answer a couple of these questions. What do I need to apply? How does my English need to be on behind? Can I study languages there? Actually, that's a kind of a long question. We're going to get to that. OK, so the question from uh, Isabel, what do you need to apply? I'm going to show you. So please stick with us. Um, and then we have someone who asked our classes online or in person. Um, both. We are doing both. Alba, what's your modality? Do you do in person or online right now? So right now I'm still taking all my classes online. Okay, so you're doing all of them online. Mm -hmm. um, this semester for the fall 2021, we have opened up our campus to be able to do both the combination of online learning and also um, uh, also uh, in person. And we're still gradually coming back, but international students currently have the option to do either one. So that's the main thing that you can do either one. You can do online or you can do face-to-face whichever is gonna be preferable to you. Um, and then we had another question, which was, do I need to be vaccinated before you come to Florida or can I get the vaccine at your college? Um, you do not need to be vaccinated before you come to Florida specifically. However, um, you're gonna to wanna to check the, um, the US State Department's regulations in terms of international travel for visitors coming to the United States. I can only speak to the state of Florida. Florida does not require that, nor does Valencia College, okay? So we do not require you to be vaccinated. But the good news is um, you can get vaccinated here. We do offer vaccinations on the campus uh, and also really any pharmacy, you can get it. You should be eligible to get it even as an international student. Alba, did you get vaccinated yet? Yeah, I got vaccinated in Valencia. Yeah, yeah. so you can definitely do it here. Um, thank you for that. And then we got a question about work, but we're gonna get, we're gonna talk about work a little bit later. Um, Okay, so we mentioned this already, um, except I did not mention this. Uh, we actually have, a lot of people don't realize this, uh, Valencia College has a significant number of international students. We have over a thousand international students who are studying both in our English program. We have an excellent intensive English program and they're also in degree studies. So, and we have representation from over 100 countries, uh, some places that you would not, might not even think of. Um, we've got good representation from places like Kazakhstan and, uh, and even from Vietnam. So we are actually doing very well. Regardless of where you come from, chances are you're going to be able to find somebody who also comes from there. In this case, our audience is uh, Turkey, and we have a significant Turkish population at our school. So we welcome them and we welcome you. Um, what about Orlando? Okay, so we talked about this a little bit. Our climate is warm year round. If you're an outdoorsy person and you like the sunshine, um, Florida is actually called the sunshine state. Um, so on the days that we don't get a lot of rain, um, the sun is often bright and hot. Um, me personally, it's a little warm for me, um, but I know most people really, really like that. So if you wanna be outdoors, it's perfect. Um, in terms of uh, actual public safety, Two things I want to mention, Valencia College as an institution is extremely safe. Uh, we have campus police on every campus and we really don't have any incidents at all. Uh, so it's an extremely safe place to study. Um, I always feel safe and welcome on campus. 
And I generally, I feel safe and, and welcome in Orlando. Orlando, for a big city, does not have big city crime. Um, so it is a pretty safe place to live, minus the occasional things and, you know, people get cars broken into and stuff like that. But as far as um, personal crime, it's quite a place, safe place to be. Um, our city is incredibly diverse. We have, uh, and I think a lot of people don't know this because they think of Orlando as a tourist town. Um, but if you think about it, it actually makes sense because we have people who come from all over the world who come to visit us. And what is typical is they will come to Orlando and they will fall in love with our city and they will stay here. And because of that, we are extremely blessed to have um, representation from primarily through Latin America and the Caribbean. Um, uh, we have an extremely large Brazilian population here in Orlando, but also a Spanish speaking population. Uh, it's pretty common in Orlando to be on the streets. Uh, I was downtown yesterday and I couldn't count how many languages I heard spoken. I can tell you right now, I heard Russian, I heard Czech, uh, I also heard Spanish, Alba, I heard Spanish, Spanish, and also Latin Spanish. Oh. Uh, yeah, and, and, uh, and of course, Portuguese is spoken uh, from thanks to our Brazilian community. So um, this makes our city a lot of fun. It makes it a very interesting and vibrant place to live in terms of festivals, cultural activities, and the food. We have so much food here no matter what you want. And as I said, it's fun. It's a fun place to live. There's a lot of stuff to do. If you don't, you're like me, I don't really go to Disney and Universal very much. Um, I'm more of an outdoors person. And so I like to go on the river and go to the beaches. Um, what do you like to do in your free time for fun, Alba? So it depends on the, on the season. <laughs> like right now in Halloween, um, Disney World, I love it because like I'm a Halloween fan. I love fall. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, since I've been living here, uh, every year I go to Disney World in Halloween because of the decoration and everything. But in the free time, I love going to restaurants. I love going to City Walk. That's like Universal, but not inside Universal. Uh, yeah. The movies, like here, the movies are so cool. <laughs> I don't have this movie theater since Spain. Oh, so you mean the cinema with the nice chairs and everything? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The one in Disney Springs. Oh my God, that that's awesome. So I like going there or shopping is mine. <laughs> yeah, and, and there's so many opportunities for all of that because everything here is really built around entertaining people. Um, and, and I will add another thing. This city is so beautifully clean. If you've ever visited the United States, we have you know, some cities that are really aren't that clean or they've been through industry and they're you know, trying to clean up. Um, Orlando is unbelievably clean. Uh, I've really never seen a city like that. It just, it sparkles and it shines. And it's, uh, I'm not real sure how we do it. Um, I think it's kind of a young city, um, but it really is a great place to live. Uh, okay, let's take a look at some other, other options. Um, in terms of how our calendar, uh, we've got three semesters. The next one coming up is going to start in spring. We still have definitely, if you're interested in studying as early as the spring, you still have time to apply, um, but you may be looking for a little bit later summer term with classes that start in May and then the fall term, which is the typical beginning, um, those, those classes start in August. But that's not all that important right now. We were asked in the chat, what do we actually need to apply? That's a great question. Um, and I did not mean to bury the lead because I know how important that is, but uh, here we are. So as you can see here, it's actually not all that much. Um, if you're a high school graduate, then we're going to need to see your high school transcripts or your diploma. Um, they're going to, so your, your transcripts and your diploma are going to be in your original language. One thing you'll have to do is you'll need to have those translated into English by a certified translator, and then you can send those to us. But the application process is incredibly simple. It can all be done online. There is no need for you to have to send us anything. You don't have to mail anything or email anything at all. You can actually upload all of your required documents through your application portal, which simplifies the process for you uh, and us. Um, so that's, that helps us be, to be able to admit students quickly. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. A second item that you'll need and be prepared for this for any college that you're applying to. Of course, we'd love you to come to Valencia, but as educators, we want you to go to the college or the school that is appropriate for you and that's best for you. If it's not us, then we wish you luck to go somewhere else. But no matter where you apply, 
you're going to have to provide some proof of English proficiency. Um, what we require for English proficiency is we can take TOEFL. You must have at least a 45 in TOEFL. Uh, we can also take IELTS. Um, and for IELTS, you only need a 5.5 that's comparable to other schools. So you may see six or 6.0. For Valencia College, you need a 5.5. Financial documentation. You need to be able to present a bank statement or a proof of finances that shows around $23,000. Now, that does not mean that your expected expenses will be $23,000. Um, they might, but what we need to do is we need to provide this proof to immigration so that they can see that this student has enough money to support herself independently in Orlando for a year or longer if necessary. That's what the proof of finances are for. Again, the amount that needs to be shown is around $23,000. Um, and then, of course, a copy of your passport. So that's pretty much it. If you have been to college before and then you're trying to attend college at Valencia, this process is a little bit different. You'll have to do one extra step. But if that, is, if that applies to anyone here, okay, so I'll say that again. If you have been to university before, then the process of uh, transcripts is a little bit different. And so if that is true of anyone who's visiting us today, and you need more information about, okay, so Jason, I've been to university before. What do I do now? What do I do with my transcripts? Uh, I can explain that process to you. It takes a little bit of time. So unless we, uh, we save some time, we'll move on. Um, in terms of the, sorry, Alba, I got a picture of my cat in here again. Um, in terms of the cost, so as I mentioned, you need to present, you need to show an amount of 23,338. But this won't necessarily be what your actual costs are. Um, we go by cost of tuition per credit, okay? Uh, we, it, it does not matter what is your major, it does not matter what is your program, we just go by per credit and that's it, that's a flat rate. Also, you can probably anticipate this number, 399 per credit, remaining the same. Valencia has, does not often increase tuition, uh, which is, Really nice, considering most colleges will up their tuition almost every year. Uh, ours stays the same pretty much every year. And what that means for you in annual costs, uh, for F1 students, you have to take 12 credits. So you can do the math, okay? So 12 times 400 is about 4,800 per semester. Double that up, you take two semesters, 9,600. That's gonna be your expected expenses for a year. It's not very much. Uh, it's And in terms of if you want to look at the American university system, or let's just stay right in the state of Florida, um, our tuition of 9,600, if we compare that to our partner school, UCF, the University of Central Florida, UCF's tuition is going to be closer to around 17,000. So I think you can see the big difference here and why a lot of students choose to begin with us, because you can still get your degree from UCF uh, if you start with us. But the question is, do you really wanna spend all that much money to go directly to UCF when you can get the same degree by starting with us? Uh, then in addition to that, of course, all international students are gonna to need to pay for health insurance. Again, you're gonna encounter this in other colleges too. This is not unique to Valencia and ours is about 2000. It's also a good plan. It's similar to what I have as an employee and it's a good plan. And then the third category is living expenses. And this could look like a lot, but that's going to depend on your individual living situation. Our international students are in living here in many different settings and different forms. A lot of them already live with family. So if you live with family, then you can expect to not have to pay this much money because your family is going to be helping you with living expenses. Still others will live in the dorms, uh, which is at our downtown campus. And then still others are going to actually uh, live in an apartment. What's your current living situation, Alba? If you do, can you speak to that? Yeah. So right now I am living in my own apartment. So and it's not that expensive. So the living expenses for me are lower than that. So it yeah. really depends on each person. But it's true. Like that's a good average because I've lived in three different places, and an average of that is more or less that. So it's pretty accurate that number. 
Yeah, I think so. And it just, again, it depends on how are you setting up your living situation. We have students who don't have whole, if you have a whole apartment, you have your own apartment. Yeah, it's going to cost this much. It's going to cost this much. But if you share, which we've got a lot of students do, that number goes down a lot. Um, we also have other housing options um, that we're going to talk about a little bit later on. Um, and this is it, actually. We want. I did want to talk about housing while we're here. And meanwhile, I'm going to check the chat and make sure we're not missing anything. Um, Okay, so we have a brand new building. This is about two years old, less than two years old, actually, um, at our downtown campus that is now for, um, for students. We have a dormitory, we have on-campus housing. Um, you have single and shared rooms that are available at the downtown, downtown location. Um, but then we have the other options that we mentioned. So I think for right now, we just wanna focus on, the, uh, on Union West, which is our, our student dormitory. And I think Alba lived there for a little while, didn't you? Yeah, I have. <laughs> Tell us about some of the good things about living downtown, if you can. So honestly, there's like a lot of good things of living downtown. Like, first of all, downtown is like the middle of a city. So from there, you're like 20 minutes from everywhere. So yeah. Like, no matter where you want, it's 20 minutes <laughs> everywhere. And Unless you want to go downtown, then you can walk. Then you're right there. Yeah. Exactly. See, that's a very good thing because for international students, not everyone has cars when they first come here. So mm -hmm. it's good if you are in downtown because downtown is like a small place where you can walk everywhere. Like there's not a lot of roads in there. It's made for people to walk there. But if you it are in beautiful, area, downtown exactly. is really nice. Yeah, they even have like this lake, Lake Iola. It's beautiful. Like there's so many gyms, so many places to go to eat. So many, like the diversity in downtown, it's incredible. You have people from all over there. And what about for, the, oh, sorry. Yeah, sorry. I don't, don't worry, tell me. What about the Union West building itself? What was your experience? Mm -hmm. And, and what's a, what do students say about the Union West usually? So of course there's like people who like it and people who don't, but it's a very nice place to start for an international student since you don't know much about um, the city or the people it's good to start living with a roommate maybe you plan some some things to go out with them you of course if you prefer to be like by yourself you have the the single rooms but if you don't want to be by yourself you have the shared rooms then you have a huge like the sixth floor it's just yes, the whole floor so like a shared thing for all the students there yep. so you have like um tennis oh, what's then pool, you have pool there, you have like to make barbecues, you have so, so many things to do there and their gym is huge. Mm -hmm. So like, it's very big to be inside a, a building. I've been in a lot of gyms and that one is so far the best I've been in because it's just for students, you like people from outside cannot get in there. So it's just for people like you. Then, um, yeah, then also they have, they opened two restaurants inside the building. So right. you don't even have, like, if it's raining, you don't even have to get wet because the restaurant is inside there. <laughs> so, so yeah, you have a huge variety. You have like from breakfast to lunch to snacks, everything you can get in, in the building. And you also have the garage in there. So everything is very convenient, really. Yeah. So it's very, very good. And if for our students who are studying hospitality and culinary, and that's one of our most popular majors is hospitality and culinary, because it makes sense. We're in Orlando um, where we have tourism from all over the world. So if you're interested in doing anything related to restaurant management or working at one of the resorts here, uh, this is a really good place to study. And the thing is at Union West, all of their classrooms are right there. So if you happen to be studying that, uh, you can live and wake up and just walk to class all without even leaving the building. Uh, so it's very modern. It's like um, one of those, you know, modern big city buildings where everything that you need is in this one location. Uh, and another cool thing about this, you wouldn't think about it when you look at the picture, it doesn't look like it's that big of a building. But in Orlando, it's a strange thing about Orlando. We don't have a lot of tall buildings. It's very flat. Um, so if you happen to live, wh which floor were you on, Alba, when you, when you lived I there? Was, I was in the 14th. You were way up there. Okay. So you must have had some pretty good views of the city when you lived there. Oh, my God. Yeah. Like the Envoy Center, I could see it from there. Yeah, it's cool. And you get some great views there. And the sunsets, we have amazing sunsets here. Um, sets over the beach, over the West Coast. You got to see it for yourself. Trust me. 
Uh, yeah. Okay, so, oops, let's see if my slide's not working here. Yeah, here we go. Uh, so we did promise we're gonna talk about work and the questions came up. Um, so let me revisit those questions in here, um, <clears throat> which was, uh, where can I work and how many hours am I allowed to work? Okay, um, so F1 students, uh, those of you who are international students, you all are eligible for work opportunities as long as you uh, speak appropriately with your advisor and pursue those opportunities, they can help you do that. Um, it's not something that just happens, you have to put a little bit of effort into it, uh, but they're great opportunities to take advantage. As you can see here, we've got three possible options. Uh, your first option is gonna be part-time employment on campus, and that's for up to 20 hours per week, and it must be on campus. Um, however, um, the limitation to being on campus, I think, is actually an advantage to you uh, for two reasons. One, Valencia is an excellent place to work, period. Um, I'm here for a reason. This is a great place to work with good benefits and a lot of good people working around you. Um, and the, uh, the second reason is uh, working on campus also gives you an opportunity to stay engaged with your college community. Uh, and, and you don't have to worry about recruiting, uh, commuting and driving around. Um, so I would take advantage of those. Do you work, Alba? Yeah, so uh, like I said before, I've been working for more than two years now and I'm doing the, um, like the part-time employment. So it's yes, 20 hours a week, which is not bad because you have to be full-time students. So you need to be able to really like do great in your classes, but you also can work and earn some money. So yeah, but you don't want to work too much as a full-time exactly. student. Yeah. Exactly. So like it's a 20 hours, it's like $10 a week. So it's not bad at all. Like it really helps with your rent, with your classes. Like it really helps. And I really love it. It's like the best experience I've had so far since I came to the U.S. And it's great because Valencia, like Jason said, it's a family. So like if you ever need anything, working inside, you have like connections inside <laughs> and yeah. they can help you with everything so it is great and it keeps you like i understand some people they come here by themselves so it can be a little bit hard to talk to people but working really helps you that's what happened to me i was very shy i couldn't talk to people like that but now like my english improved so much the communication skills improved so much now i have friends i have connections i i go to places it's like the best thing you can do. So I really encourage you guys to, to apply. And right now, like I work there, so I have inside knowledge. So we're yeah. like, opening uh, for positions in spring. So if you guys are gonna start in the spring, feel free to like walk in the department, ask for applications, they will give it to you. And they know international students can only work on campus. Right. So that's like, a little advantage for you because they know you need it. So they help you. They really help you. Yeah. And um, another thing about work opportunities, because we get, uh, or at least we do get asked this time to time, which is, you know, what opportunities are going to be available next semester? Here's the thing, guys. We are gradually transitioning from being online due to COVID pandemic to opening up. And what that means is that starting in the springtime, as we have, again, the campus is slowly starting to reopen. Uh, for the spring semester, we're going to have more jobs available on campus as the campus continues to slowly reopen as well. Um, whether that means that you're working at the uh, the, name, the campus Starbucks, or you're working in the library, or you're working as a tutor, or you're working in an office, over time, we're having more and more of those positions start to become open. If you're not looking at spring, and I understand if you're not, because spring is pretty close. If you're looking at maybe next year, sometime in the summer, or in the fall, um, we should see even more of that begin to open as we gradually return back to normal here as well. Um, so we do get asked about that. How is the pandemic in Florida? It's getting better. It's not ideal, okay? Um, but it is getting better. Um, and with that, with the improvement also comes improvements to our economy. And with that comes improvements to the work opportunities for the students. Um, so that's that's in terms of the part time employment, you have plenty of should have plenty of options there if you do want to work. Um, CPT is another opportunity. Uh, this is an internship related to your to your major. So if you are studying business, then your CPT internship will be with a local company that has specializes in business. And that internship is incredibly invaluable to your future. This is good work experience but most likely you're also gonna get paid. 
And so CPT allows you to get work experience while also make some money off campus. You can do that in conjunction with your on-campus job. You can do both. Be careful about how much you're working because of course your study should be your primary focus, but you do have both of these options. And then the third option is OPT, optional practical training. Um, this is an awesome opportunity, okay? Um, OPT is, it's employment related to your major once more, but it's full-time and it can be for up to one year, for an entire year. So after you get your degree, then you can engage in OPT. Um, OPT is the starting point for a lot of students to, to um, begin their careers after they get their degrees. And the really cool thing about OPT is that it's good for, uh, for up to one year after each, it says here, after each educational level. Technically speaking, when you graduate from Valencia with your associate's degree, you have finished a level. If you transfer, and so therefore you're able to do OPT when you finish at Valencia. If you transfer to UCF, um, and then you've complete your degree at UCF, you've completed another degree, which means you can do OPT a second time. So you actually do have additional work opportunities through Valencia than you would if you went straight to a four-year college. Uh, and I'm just checking the chat. Um, the question is, good, it's related to work. Will I have a chance to meet potential employers by networking? Oh yeah. Can you, can, what, what, what career and employment services do we have for students here in terms of being able to network? Alba, can you speak to that a little bit? Like, what do you mean? Well, do you ever go to the career center, for example? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And what's your experience with them? What do they do for you? Oh my God. They help you so, so much. Like from helping you with your resume, like to make it look good for like for people to hire you. So practice interviews for my interview, I was practicing with them so much and I improved so, so much in my, my interview skills. They also have a lot of workshops, so you can join them on skill shops and they can explain you how to be in the interviews. They also help you explore the careers. So maybe you don't know what yeah. you want to do. They, they have a quiz offer for you, like in your Atlas, well, in a platform we use in Valencia. Right. Um, and they help you like, yes, answer some questions about yourself. What do you like? And it tells you like a list of careers that will fit you. So like they, they are very helpful. It's a very healthy resource that I will definitely use. Yeah. And then we've also got, um, although we haven't had it as much due to, you know, the ongoing COVID problems and the pandemic, but normally under normal circumstances, uh, we have the career fairs. Um, a lot of local companies understand the value of Valencia's education and will actively come here and recruit for work. And they'll set up on campuses and we'll have fairs around, um, you know, in our auditorium where everybody's set up and employers are there. And then you can definitely go in there and start networking. Um, so yeah, th those opportunities, you're going to have plenty of them. Uh, oh, they are also online. So you can like, like online. And, and they do online now too. Yeah, mm -hmm. they do online. Um, and in terms of support, I think it's, uh, it's very important that you understand that when you come here, you are with us and we don't forget about you after we bring you here. I think that you may encounter that at some other schools, um, but we, you are, once you're here, you're part of our family. We're going to know your names. We're going to know your faces and we're going to be happy to see you here and we want to see you succeed. Um, so we try to keep our students as healthy, I mean, academically and mentally and socially healthy as we possibly can, because we understand that a happy student is often a successful student and we want our students to be successful. So we provide a lot of support to you wherever you need it. Tutoring, for example, is a free service. Um, I would really take advantage of that. International students often struggle their first year, um, their first year in a new school because they're dealing with a lot of, a lot of factors. You're dealing with being homesick, uh, you're dealing with missing your family, being in a new place, not, sometimes not really knowing anybody. And with that sometimes can be a bit of a struggle academically, it can be a little bit harder. Um, so uh, I encourage everyone to take advantage of the free tutoring that we offer because why not? There's no reason not to. Uh, we also have a number of clubs and organizations um, Alba, are you involved in any clubs or organizations? So I first joined my first year in Visa Club, but then I started working. So 
now I'm very involved in the work and the studies, so I'm not in a club right now. Okay, well, you sort of are. You're part of ambassadors, so it's not really oh, a club. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, like I will really like it. And as like a person asked before, and I answered that person um, for the clubs, there's like a huge variety of them. So you're gonna find something you like. And in case you don't, you can also create your own club. So that is pretty awesome. Yes, um, that is absolutely true. Uh, you're allowed to create your own club, which students often do. Uh, one of the clubs and organizations for international students that comes to mind would be our Visa Club or VIC, depends on the campus, but we've got both Visa and VIC. They are essentially the same thing. They're Valencia Intercultural Student Associations. Um, this is our pride and joy. We're extremely proud of this group and what they do for the college and how they represent us. Um, they work, we work closely with them. I'm an advisor and I work closely with the, with the visa and the VIC students as well. Uh, we like to, we have monthly meetings to, um, to you know, better how to, how to represent the college. Um, but we also will take them We'll take our visa students out and, or not just visa, we'll take our international students. If you want to go, we take you guys out on trips. Did you go to any of those last year or the year before, before we kind of stopped? Were you able to do any of those? I know they went to NASA, but I got yeah. sick the week they were going to go. So oh, I that's too bad. Go. Yeah. Yeah. We took them to NASA. We've taken them to Disney before. We even took them to... <laughs> uh, we live in Florida. We have a lot of alligators and we have this theme park called Gatorland. Um, where you can go and see all the alligators. We took them there. We even took them to a, an ice hockey game downtown. Nobody knew, understood the game at all. Um, but it was, except for me, I was trying to explain the game to all the students. Uh, it's a lot of fun. It's a fun group to be part of, um, but it's such a great way to make friends and get connected. And there's work opportunities in that. That is an excellent networking opportunity because most of our Visa and VIC students already have jobs. Um, you know, they're upperclassmen or they've moved on to UCF. And so they can help you and point you in the right direction in terms of how to position yourself academically for success, but also how to find good work opportunities. And that's that's our goal is to not just have you here, but have you be successful and happy here so that when you move on, um, you're able to continue your academics and your career uh, in, a, in a positive way. Um, we've got some questions that are coming coming in here. Um, so will I be able to become a tutor at the end of the course? I, if I understand that question correctly, it's someone who wants to become a teacher or, uh, or a tutor after they've done their studies here. Uh, yes. Yes, you can. That's the short answer. I have to keep them short because we're short on time. Um, is it possible to find a job at the university? Uh, yeah, we just talked about that. So um, it's it's not as easy right now because there's not as many open positions due to COVID. Um, but yeah, it's definitely possible. Um, how can I experience multiculturalism on the university campus? Be here. That's all you have to do to experience multiculturalism, right, Alba? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, just be here. Our campus is multicultural. Um, in fact, most of the most, I would say the majority of people here on our campus um, don't really look like me. Uh, and this is a good thing. This is a good thing. Uh, and then the, the next question we have, after my studies, if I get a job, will I have to apply for a work visa? Um, yeah, yeah, that, but that's gonna be true of anybody. So um, the, the rules of the, of the F1 visa are such that if you get, once you get your degree, you're supposed to go home. And so if you intend to stay in the United States, then you're going to need to get work sponsorship. Uh, otherwise, you need a new visa. And so, but um, that is extremely common, you guys. And that's where you want to take advantage of the opportunities to do your CPT, your OPT. Um, because what often happens, especially if you do OPT, is that you're, you worked for a year for a company that most likely wants to keep you. And if they want to keep you there, they're going to give you work sponsorship. But you do have to apply for that. So just be prepared for that as part of the process. Um, and then the last question is, how has the pandemic impacted the international student community? I can't answer this one, Alba. This one's all you. How has, how has the pandemic impacted the international student community? So, like, I, it impressed me a lot. And it's still it's surprising me that how fast Valencia changed from on-campus to, to online. Like no one saw this coming and Valencia took like two weeks to put all the serve, like all the departments online, all the events online, workshops online, like the like 
their speed they changed it was amazing so you barely felt the change of course like you are at home so now everything you're doing online but like all the events turn online so they kept you entertained kind of thing like all the events online workshops online working online the classes online so like it wasn't a big a big big change honestly so it was yeah and I'll be honest, you guys, um, it was tough, okay? It was difficult. It's been difficult on all of us. If you have experienced the pandemic in your home country, then you know what it did to us here too. Uh, everything changed. Our whole lives changed. We got sent home. And, you know, some students got, you know, they got stuck here. They missed their family. They got lonely. They dealt with all those things. But we are getting better. And I think that us being able to, to the extent that we were able to reach out and support our students, we still had our meetings, we still had the support groups, we still had all of these things going on, even though it was virtual. So I don't think that our experience with the pandemic has been unique. I think that we went through the same problems that everybody else did, but we're now emerging out of this and we're gonna come out of this stronger. Valencia has made some really positive changes in terms of how we deliver our education now. Um, which is more of a 21st century model, I think. It's a little bit like we've kind of caught up to the way things should be to use technology. Um, and so I think that I wouldn't be too concerned about this anymore. Our whole, our whole society here in America is getting a little bit better and the same thing in Orlando. I mean, I just went to a hockey game last night, you guys. I wouldn't have done that a year ago. I would have been too afraid to be around that many people. Um, but it's, I think we're doing really well. Uh, let's see, we got a couple more questions before we come in. Do you offer financial aid? Thank you. Um, I was just about to get to that. We do actually offer scholarships. Um, financial aid is only of, uh, eligible for US residents, but in terms of other financial opportunities, we do offer scholarships for international students. These are special and prestigious awards that are only reserved for international students. So this money comes directly from our department. Uh, you can see here some of our previous scholarship winners as well. Um, I don't know why he looks so unhappy, but anyway, um, <laughs> yes, so we're very proud of this award. If you're able to get the high end, which is worth 2,500, that will cover most of your first semesters of tuition. Uh, in addition to that, after, after you've enrolled and you started taking your classes, there are a series of private awards through the Valencia Foundation that you can also apply for. Alba, do you have any scholarships? Did you qualify for anything? So I did my first year, um, I won $1,000 because it was like the first uh, semester as international student. I don't mm -hmm. know if it was Adney, the Global Achievers Award, but it was something like that. So I, I won the $1,000. Yeah, so <laughs> it's free money. Yeah, Can't turn that down. Uh, a couple more questions coming in. Um, okay, good. What's the average cost of living for an international student? That's a good question. Um, I think we mentioned that before. It varies. It's going to vary person by person. Um, so this is an estimate cost of living, 11650 But this is going to depend on how you live and where you live. So a lot of students, may be, they maybe they live with family and they don't pay really anything at all. Um, and then there's others who will share a room or share an apartment with a, with a friend. If you live in Union West, um, it'll be around this, maybe a little bit less if you've got a smaller room and you have a roommate, but it'll be around that, um, which seems like a lot. But it isn't, because if you had any idea how much it costs to live in downtown Orlando, um, it's actually very, very affordable to live in Union West, which is downtown. So it depends on the student. It depends on how you live. So be prudent and be smart. Um, don't, you know, I wouldn't say go buy the latest iPhone if you're struggling to pay the bills. Um, but, you know, just be smart about that. And so I think we're about to run out of time. This is super, super important, you guys. We want you to be able to contact us anytime. Um, and keep in mind right here, this is true. We're going to get back to you in a day. This is what we do. Uh, we have three of us who sit around every day looking at the emails and our Skype and everything else to make sure that everything is in order. Um, and then I can also put, I'm going to actually go ahead and put in the chat so you guys can see this. Um, if you want to reach me personally, um, there's my email address, okay? Um, and if you wanna reach Alba, also email me, okay? And then I'll, I'll get you in touch with Alba. Um, Alba is also part of our student ambassador program. So you can actually talk to her directly um, if you use a, another platform that we call Unibuddy. 
Um, and that will get you in touch directly with Alba and myself. Um, but otherwise, feel free to follow our, uh, our Instagram. If it works, since we've been having some trouble with Facebook and Instagram lately, but uh, it should be running. And you can, you're welcome to follow our Instagram. We post a few times every week. Uh, we've also got an excellent Facebook group. The Facebook group is going to be the best thing for you because you can talk to me. You can email me and ask about how do I apply? How do I enroll? I can tell you all of that. What I can't always tell you about is what the students have. And so the Facebook group is so valuable for being able to communicate with the students. If you're looking for a place to live, if you want information about books or classes or professors or even just general information about the college, um, the Facebook group is going to be the place to go. Just go in there and ask any question you want. Somebody is going to answer you and they're going to usually do it right away. Um, and so I think that's basically, let's see if I have another slide. I don't. So I'm just going to leave this last slide here and I think we're going to finish it up unless we have any other questions, do we? I think we're good. Thank you so yeah. much for that um, brilliant presentation, really informative and really um, well conducted. Um, if you do have any questions, please do let us know, even if you are watching on demand, which is after the recording is sent to you, do send them in and we will put you in touch with uh, the wonderful Jason who will answer you within one working day, apparently, <laughs> which is brilliant. Yeah, so feel free, you guys, um, if you want to, if you have any other questions, I can also help you set up an appointment if you would like to speak with me one on one. Um, I can uh, set it up through Zoom or through Skype, whatever is good for you. And uh, we can take a little time if you've got some detailed questions that you want to find out about. Um, you 100% are my priority. This is my office, but my time is your time. And so if you need anything at all, I want you to reach out to me. Otherwise, I think that's about it, right? I think so. You've covered a lot of information there. So I think it's great for them to kind of understand and see if there is anything that they want to ask. But thank you so much for, for a brilliant presentation. And I will speak with you again soon. Um, everybody else, goodbye. Have a great day. And we will speak to you soon. Thank you, everyone. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. This was great. Bye-bye for now. Bye.